Hi, my name is Belinda, and welcome to Belinda's Bobbles, episode 14. Today is May 22nd. It's about 12.30 in the morning. Nice and quiet here, about as cool as it's going to get. We're already in the 90-degree range here in Texas, and that's where I'm coming from if you're new. All the information on where to find me is down below, uh, but it's been over a month since I've seen you guys as far as with an actual episode. Reason being is there was the North Texas yarn crawl. So that finished up and right afterwards, was it right afterwards? Yeah, right afterwards I had a root canal and after that I got sinus infection and after that Seaver graduated college. So it's been kind of busy, <laughs> but I have so much to share with you guys. Uh, so, if you're new here, welcome. I'm coming to you from Texas. I live uh, in the Fort Worth area with my husband, our um, grown son, and three chihuahuas, and it's a madhouse. <laughs> it is literally a madhouse. Um, trying to think where I'm going to go first with all this. So I have just so much to share with you because it has been so long. And um, also, just to be able to put this out here real quick, go over to day one of the North Texas Yarn Crawl, which is also titled Potiversary because I just had my first potiversary on the first day of the yarn crawl, as far as the, the first day I crawled on the yarn crawl. And on that day, if you put a comment down below, you'll be eligible for just a little thank you for celebrating with me for my first potiversary. I cannot believe it has already been a year that I've been sitting here talking to you guys, talking to myself, sharing things, carrying a camera around. It has been wild and I'm having a blast and I hope you are too. So there's that part. And I'm going to do, probably give it about another week, maybe two weeks. Um, and I'll come back with a quick um, video and make that drawing. Then also, let's see what else is going on. Well, also it's just, there's just everything in the world going on. But <laughs> let's just sit back and relax and enjoy a little bit of time together. Uh, it's nice and quiet here in the house with everybody else asleep. And I'm off tomorrow, so I figured might as well finish this up. I, it's just so much has happened during this time, but I'll leave that for later on if there's time, which I doubt there will be. <laughs> so let's get started with what I'm wearing. How's about that? Okay, what I have on is the Fresh Berries t-shirt. Uh, this is... Uh, made out of Universal Yarns Cotton Supreme DK Waves, and it's in gemstone. This is a self-striping cotton yarn, and I've had this for a couple of years. I love it. Uh, the Fresh Berries is a free pattern. I've got everything linked down below, by the way, including where you can find me. Uh, but this top for my size we're talking extra large, uh, just took three skeins. And the only thing for, it's a free pattern, so the only thing you do for the sleeve is you put a little bit of ribbing on it. No sleeve island here. And it is one of my favorite tops. I always get compliments on it. And with it being self-striping, that is a dream. Also, because of it being cotton, you know, it stretches out a bit. So, I actually made this in size large, and it's a little big on me even, you know, but it's so comfy. All right, so 
finishing that up, let's go on in directly to finished objects. I have a couple. Well, it has been a while since you've seen me, so that should not be surprising. All right, so if you've been with me for a little bit, you know that I have fallen in love with Jesse May Design Secret Summer Crop. This is my third one that I've made. <laughs> and I made it out of Queensland Collections Brighton Beach and Parrotfish. Now, this is a sport um, weight, and it is 45% linen, 35% cotton, and 20% acrylic. I've got my notes off to the side, as you can tell. But I held it double. Reason being is I wanted it to not be very see-through. And I also made the straps wider and, of course, the body longer than what was called for. Here, I'll put a picture of me up here wearing this on the yarn crawl because I have been wearing this like crazy. I absolutely love it. The swish factor with it being linen. I mean, look at that. It just flows back and forth. And I even have a little tag here. Let's see if you can see it. I don't know if you can read that or not. Uh, there we go, maybe. And it's maybe if it stops reflecting off of here. But it says, yes, I made it. <laughs> but I just love this. And I'm able to, um, you know, I can wear it for at work underneath my smock. And it's nice and cool and comfortable. And yes, I'll be making more of those. But it didn't, it took me, you know, working on this and a few other projects, it took me about a month to complete. And the next thing I want to do is I want to make one with just um, fingering weight, but make it out of a cotton fingering weight and have it for a pajama top. Why not? You know, we make all this stuff. I don't get to wear a lot of stuff out and about all the time. So I need to have something for, you know, maybe just a pajama top and to wear around the house. Okay, so the next thing I have, I forgot to put in my notes because I haven't put it in Ravelry yet. And where did... Okay, I thought I had it. It's another Queensland cotton. Hold on just a second. Okay, I'm back. So I made three bucket hats. Didn't use a pattern, just um, a pattern that I developed for another hat. It was in, cro these were crocheted and they were requested of me. You know, and it's the Queensland Collection Coastal Cotton. This is pure soft cotton, 100% cotton. And it was, a worsted weight cotton. I'll have to put a picture up here of the hats because I've already given them to the new owners. And this is all I have left from the child's hat. Don't have anything left from either of the two adult hats. But they turned out great. I was really happy with it. And I've written down my instructions so that I could put together a pattern because I actually have a couple of ideas for a couple of crocheted hat patterns that are uh, one of them is based on a pattern that I wrote years ago and I actually made the hats and sold them on Etsy whenever I first started up Belinda's Bobbles um, and that was something I was doing about 10 years ago but I need to work on the pattern a little bit, but this was a chance for me to do a little bit more with it by turning it into a bucket hat. So, I have those as finished objects. I told you I've been busy. 
But also during the yarn crawl, my brother Bill went out on the crawl and we ran into him in several shops. And I've shown you some of his um, things that he makes. You know, he's been a knitter for years and years and years, much longer than me, much, much longer than me. And he's been knitting since he was a child. And he's been camera shy. He's given me permission to show off some of his makes, but he's never gone on camera for me before until the yarn crawl. He actually came on camera. So I have two of his makes to show you here. I'm going to put a video, hopefully, up of his um, knit picks. Oh, let me see. No, his set and sleeve cardigan. This is by Ann Budd from the book, The Knitter's Handy Book of Sweater Patterns. I showed you that a few, a month or so ago. I still haven't gotten into it very much myself, but um, I got a copy of it off of Amazon for myself. He does so much with these. And he made this with Cascade Yarn Wolpaca color number 19, Mystic Purple. Now this is a worsted weight yarn. And he added the zipper in and it looks great. He did such a great job of it. And that purple, isn't it gorgeous? But thank you very much for Bill for sharing with me and actually coming on camera. And if you go over uh, to day one, uh, the yarn crawl, you'll see him kind of popping in and out in some of the different places. Okay, so also another completed uh, uh, um, item by Bill is the roller shawl. And he's been working on this six, seven months, maybe, I think. So tell me. Um, but this is by Allison Griffith. I had a little bit of trouble finding the pattern at first, but I did find it, and I will link it down below. Um, it's a paper pattern, and he made this. I'm going to um, put a video of me in right here, and I'm twirling around in this. Remember, those are big guys, so that's why he made such a big shawl. And he made this out of knit picks, woolly andies, Amber Heather. And aren't these cables gorgeous? I'll show you a picture up close of the cables. I'm telling you, the work that he does is just phenomenal. I'm always blown away. And this is another worsted weight item. We had a freeze here a couple of years ago to where he lost power and he, you know, he was living in his sweater upon sweater upon sweater. So I think he's ready now with this shawl to stay warm no matter what the weather is. Okay, so let's see. That, that, that's actually it for the finished objects. I was watching the other day um, Karen with of course I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna ah, forget recreational knitting. As soon as I start to look, I don't need to look, but um Karen on recreational knitting um mentioned that she had been working with the our uh, make along that I was doing with Mandy the first quarter of the year. <laughs> she said that I had a lot of finished objects. Well, that may be because I'm far away from my brother, but oh well. <laughs> so I did get some new construction in. And what I have for my new construction, I'm housing here in this clear bag. I had to have a clear bag to be able to take my knitting with me to watch Cedar graduate from college. And so I've been using it to take it to work. I figure that way no one's going to really care and they're going to see that what it is is yarn. And unless you're another crazy yarniac, you're not likely to take off with my yarn. Okay, so for one of them is a vanilla sock. 
but I'm experimenting a little bit with it. I have one done. And this is made from Michi Breeze. She's changing her name over to Clockwork Fibers. But this was when she was still um, dying under the name of Michi Breezes. It's in her Boardwalk DK in Protostar. It's a 7525. And uh, I cast on 56 stitches with a 3.25 millimeter US 3. And this is how it's turning out. Now, I did a two by two rib, and I did it longer than I normally do. I did the whole leg longer than I normally do. And my favorite heel is the butterfly heel by Kay Jones and the umbrella toe. I love the way it looks. The umbrella toe also by Kay Jones. Now what I am doing is I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out sizing because I've tried a few different things. So I'm doing the second sock. I've got the ribbing, but the front, I'm continuing the ribbing down the front with stockinette in the back. And I want to see you know, it's a little bit not going to match exactly. I'll still wear them both, but I'll be able to see which one's more comfortable for me. If I need to have something with a little bit more give throughout the day, or if I'm fine with just a vanilla, regular vanilla sock. Now I wear, yes, I know it's 90 degrees outside. It's going on to 100 degrees outside. And I'm wearing wool socks at work. The reason being is I have damage to a couple of my toes. And so I end up being on my feet all day. My feet end up hurting, even with all of my inserts and everything. I'm finding that wearing the wool socks, and especially the DK socks, it gives me a little bit of extra um, padding for when I'm standing all day. And the wool, has a wicking effect, so I, my feet don't feel all sweaty or anything. They're warm, but I mean, my whole body is warm. It's just the way I am at this point. I have my own internal heater. So it's not going to matter whether I'm barefoot or I have socks on. I'm going to be warm either way. So, so this is my experiment, and I will let you know how that comes about. Also, I had to cast something on with something I got from uh, the yarn crawl. Let me get something to hold this up with. Ah. I thought I had. Even though I'm dropping everything, I did think ahead a little bit. Okay. Let's see if you're going to be able to see this great color. Oh, I think so. This is the Rivage Top by Drops Design. It's a free pattern. And I am making this. Where am I at? I've lost my place in my notes. I'm making this with Circulo Fluffy Cotton Yarn. Which I have the other ones over here. Ta-da! There we go. Circulo Whoopie. I have never made anything with Circulo Yarn before. This is 100% cotton. And it's got such beautiful color to it. The color here is fire. I've seen the amigurumi kits and everything with circulo but i did not realize the other yarns that they have they're new to us here in texas 
Uh, they're out of Brazil, I believe. And the design books and everything, I loved that they are designed very inclusive with sizing. Their models go from probably a size, U.S. size 6, up to probably about a U.S. size 24, um, as far as the models that show off their beautiful designs. A lot of crochet patterns, um, some knitting patterns, and their summer book, I wasn't able to get a copy of it, and I bought this yarn specifically for one of those tops. So I wasn't able to do that. So then I found the rivage top and it has some detailing to it that I love. It's got, it looks almost like a jeweled edging here, the way it lifts up with garter um, ridges. And then the sleeves have eyelet lace. Isn't that beautiful? And I really did like the way they did the increases with the raglan here. Now on these sleeves, just like this top, the only thing left is to do an edging like the neckline. Right, right there. And then sleeves will be done. So I just split her sleeves and I'm continuing on. And the way it looks like it's going, I may not even need all three. I may be able to use just two, but I've got that third one if I need it. So I just, oh, I love the color. If you saw any of the yarn crawl episodes, you'll see I was going towards red yarn left, right, and center. And I am definitely seeing red this summer. So I'm going to need that again in a moment. But I love how it goes into the peach, or not, more a coral. So it goes from the red to the coral. My two favorite colors, probably. Okay. So they have those for new construction. And this is kind of new construction, kind of finished object, kind of, well, it's not in the works. I did some shorty socks. Can't These are just vanilla shorty socks. I can't remember if I did them last summer or the summer before. You can see they've been worn quite a bit. But they ended here. They were true shorty socks. And they kept sliding down inside my boot um, and getting just, they would not stay up over my heel no matter what. So I picked up some stitches. Didn't even undo my um, cast on edge or anything because I do top down. I just picked up stitches. And I continued on up with two by two rib. And I have added this extra onto both. And this is just scrap yarn. And it's no longer going down inside my boot. <laughs> so I have another pair or two of shorty socks that was also doing the same thing. They were going to be my summer socks, but now I'm going to add an extra edging on. And I don't feel there's a little bit of a ridge there. You can see that. There's a little bit of a ridge, but it doesn't really bother me. And it was just so simple to do, quick, did it in an evening. And instead of them being, because I love the stripes. Oh, let me find out for you. This is a Texas dyer out of the Houston area. Let me find. Where I did these. Okay, talk amongst yourselves. Everybody doing okay? <laughs> ah, there we go. This is Night Owl Fibers 
barn owl sock and it's the reading rainbow and i did make these i started them july of 2022 and completed them in september of 2022 so they are i mean the socks are two years old i mean i think they look pretty good for being two years old i mean i wash my hand knit socks in the washing machine and then i hang them up to dry so i'm i don't baby them and I wear them inside shoes and everything. But I did love how the heel went through. And this is... Uh, what is this? This is... Yeah, this was... I cast on 64, did the 2 by 2 rib. And again with the butterfly heel... And the umbrella toe. I just got those off of patterns. I, I'm sorry I'm touching my face and everything else. My skin is just itchy and dry. It's been hot and muggy all day and I turned the air conditioner off so I could talk to you guys and I'm starting to sweat. I'm <laughs> getting dewy but I wanted to share that with you guys. So if you have socks that you're not wearing just because they're sliding down inside your shoes you're a little frustrated with them go pick up the stitches just put more ribbing on it made such a big difference and now i'm using those lots lots more okay so what i have next is in the works and i'm only going to show you one project because I've been working so much on the other two that I cast on and I've been participating in the knit or crochet every day in May, which also, I can't remember if it included crocheting on the hat or hats or not. I'd have to look back to see when I finished those. But because of that, I haven't gotten a lot of other projects worked on. I did work a bit. I just dropped my balls of yarn. Oh well. But I did work a bit on the Silver Bells by Tin Can Knits. Put this. I haven't gotten quite to, um, to the sleeves yet, but I'm getting very, very close. See if you're able to see it a little better this way. Yeah. Believe it or not, I have gotten more on here. <laughs> I think I've gotten about another two inches on here since the last time. Oh, I just love this. But I kind of had to put it aside because uh, when the air conditioner is blowing or the fan's blowing on me, my eyes just start watering. And I know it's because of the floof in here with the alpaca. This is made out of Nomad yarn and eggshell. So just bare fingering weight yarn, which is a 70 30 mix and Mirasol yarn in um, Inca, which is also fingering, and Carnelian. Now that one is 64% rayon and it's what gives the shimmer. It just has this beautiful shimmer. But it's 64% rayon and 36% alpaca. And that alpaca is fluffing up on me. But I'm pretty sure this is going to be short sleeve. I go back and forth. And with the tin can knits pattern with silver bells, I made a just mainly one adjustment so far. And that is I did not continue with the baubles. I'm actually in this area here. There should be baubles. But because of the way it was going to be hitting me on the shoulder, I didn't want bobbles sticking out from my shoulder. 
So they give you the option of just knitting the stitches. So I did the baubles up through here and I'm just going to continue on with the lace because the lace actually goes down the arm and the chest a little bit. But I think I'm getting really close to being able to split for sleeves on it. And there's the body is, I think the lace goes down below the, the bust. So there's not a ton of body. So I have that I'm working on. Yeah, that was pretty much all I was planning on talking to you guys about in regards to my projects because I knew I was going to have a very large confessions area. It was a yarn crawl. And I tried, I really, really tried to be good. I tried. But, you know, it says I came, I crawled, I got the cup. <laughs> this is North Texas Yarn Crawl on the Lamb 2024. I don't know if you guys can see that with the lighting. But I, I had to have the cup. I tried to get some things that were not just yarn because I have plenty of yarn. I have more yarn than I will probably ever knit. And I'm need, needing to get some of this made up into things before the yarn goes, starts disintegrating or something happens to it. You know, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm sweaty. I'm sorry. I'm sweaty. I'm itchy. And I just moved you guys. I apologize. Okay, so should we take a look over here? Let's see, so I've showed you this. <laughs> I'm gonna move it back a little bit. I found some unusual things. This is called Soulmate um, Socks. They're pre-made socks and they are mismatched with love. These were size large um, in the colorway bamboo. And it says, proudly crafted with care in the U.S. from recycled fibers at our family-owned mill. And these are actually wool. Yeah, these were wool. And take a look at that. They are mismatched. I got these for Seaver. And then I got a black and white pair for Sam. That way, <laughs> it wasn't just stuff for myself. <laughs> so I did bring something home for them. Okay, so I got those. And I showed you the whoopee yarn. I do really love that. And I'll get into that in a moment. Then I also found Chick Ashby when I was at the Cotton Mill Yarns. She still had some Chick Ashby. Chick Ashby was a yarn dyer in the Waxahachie area. And I have one skein of yarn that is uh, it's a silk. And it's kind of a golden color. And it would just go so well with these. So I figured those three together... I could make a striped sweater or a shawl, something with the three together. And she had them on half price. So one is called Julia's Rose and Gingerbread Latte. And they're just so, so beautiful and they're so soft. But I couldn't just leave them behind. You know, they, they needed a home. And since I'd actually been to the shop and everything on Yarn Crawl a few years ago, I went, I've been there, I went there twice before she closed down and I just loved them. Then I also found at one of the other shops, KFI Luxury Collection Indulgent Mer Merino. And this is an extra fine mercerized merino blend, 75 merino, 25% pond I just needed 
something simple to be able to have on hand for socks for Sam. He is really getting to where he, he loves the hand knit socks. And so I wanted just a simple one that he would like. So I got that. Should I get into the Amy Was Here bag? I did not get a yarn crawl bag this year. I just, they didn't speak to me. It was a, um, a purple, or not purple, but a um, plastic vinyl, um, kind of a clear turquoise bag, and it just wasn't me. Yeah, I do have this this plastic one. But that's, I've had another one from the same uh, people that made the, those bags. I had just a notions pouch. And to tell you the truth, it stays in the bottom. It's not one that I use. It's kind of a texture thing for me. And they just had snaps along the top, which I have bags with snaps that I work with fine. But it just, this wasn't, this wasn't the bag for me this year. So I got me a different bag. I may have put it over a little bit too far. Okay, so McKinney Knittery in McKinney, Texas. Uh, she sells um, La Belle, is it La Belle, La Belle Amy, Amy, La Belle Amy, in there somewhere. <laughs> Where is it? Of course, I'm not gonna find it right off the bat. Where is it? Where's this in the bottom? Here we go. La Vienne, Amy. She sells that yarn. And Amy was actually at the shop this last year. I was working, so I didn't get to go over there. But this bag I just like the size of it it kind of reminds me of the yarn crawl bag from last year that I use a lot and it holds a lot so shall we go through this so I have the La Vienne Ami and this is Reno Super Sock trying to say the name Tangiopia. And what I'm wanting to do with this is I want to make that tank top. It's supposed to be able to make, be made with one skein as far as even for my size with the summer secret crop and turn it into the pajama top. So that's the plan here. Then I was able to meet Fox, Fox Bane Fibers. And this is Foxy Juju. She had a trunk show at Juju Knits. I got that. Also at Juju's, I miss seeing Arkansas Yarn Co. They had a um, trunk show just before. But that's Juju Petals. And it's this is her Yummy Sparkle. And if you ever want, if you want, are not able to get out to the Arkansas Yarn Co. Um, in Malvern, Arkansas. Uh, last year's Christmas in July, I went out there. And so there's a video so you can kind of get a sneak peek of what it's like. I even got to go back into the dye, dye area. And then this is a bag that, believe it or not, I try not to buy a bunch of yarn, but of course I come home with a bunch of yarn. West Seventh Wool, this is Glowworm, their own. I mean, the color. I just, I walked past it multiple times and I just had to go back. And this is um, Surrey Silk, 328 yards. That's going to, that's going to add some pop of color to something. Ooh. 
kind of liking that. <laughs> and then Fox Paint Fibers, she gave me a freebie. And DK. Then, yeah, see, I did get something. I got something. A dryer ball with a B. So I got something that was not yarn. So I needed to add to my little bee collection. So that one's going back there. And then I got some wool pop. This is universal yarn. I told you, red. I was going for the red. But there is a pattern that I bought this specifically for that I fell in love with. And so this, you should see me casting on this summer because it's actually a tank, or not a tank, but a sleeveless top. Okay, then this is the Backcountry Knitter, Simple DK in Texas Sky. And I didn't buy this one I won this at on, on the Lamb Yarn Shop. I happened, her alarm went off basically whenever I walked in the door. So I got one of the drawings and that's what, so I didn't buy this one. <laughs> I should get credit for that, right? <laughs> then when I went to, I got that one. There we go, that one. Okay. When I went to Fiber Lady, Fiber Lady has um, specializes in bamboo yarn and actually manufactures the bamboo yarn there, uh, spins it up, and has a ton of fiber. And I was talking um, to the fiber man over the fact that I was wanting to work with Drop Spindle, and I was asking him what was best. So. He gave me just a little bit of um, fiber for me to be able to experiment with. And I like, in fact, the socks I have on, I have the bamboo for the toes and heels. And it's very durable for that. So these are just some little minis so that I can use them for toes and heels. And I did double up on my toes on the socks that I'm wearing. And I just held it double. Now, whenever they're wet, they're very hard. But as soon as they dry, they're very pliable. And I don't feel a difference as far as when wearing them. But boy, they're a lot sturdier. And they're taking a beating with wearing them in my boots. So those are just my little minis for the, to go in socks. And... Then, when I was at McKinney Knittery, she had had Twisted Ambitions yarn, and I got this mini. This is Hot Boy Summer, 7525, 92 yards, 20 gram mini, and says, hand dyed with Wicked Sweet Style. Now, the trunk show was over. These were all packed away in containers in the back room, but I was able to see them. So I asked, can I go get one of those? And she said, yeah, go buy one of those. And, you know, so I went and bought. So this may go in with my um, oh, advent from my stash. That may go in there. Okay. Then I've got the little, I've got all the different, um, I've got them down, downstairs, but all the different uh, stitch markers. And we got this here to hold them all, this pin. And it says North Texas Yarn Carl 2024. And on the lamb, I've got an extra one of these. So this is actually going to go in with the um, potiversary. So whoever wins the potiversary will get that. Okay. 
Okay. I'm actually getting down to the end. It wasn't quite as bad as I was thinking. Kind of. <laughs> okay, so I got a couple stitch stoppers. So I got some black boots, cowboy boots, and some Highland cows, or Highland coos, whichever way you want to say it. So I got me a couple of new, I'm using Christmas stitch stoppers on <laughs> some of my stuff. So I figured I might switch out for a different time of year because, and I love Highland coos. I got these 3D printed <laughs> at the Irish Festival. Mama there. And baby. <laughs> so. so I got me this hat. And this wasn't yarn crawl, but I just, I love, love her stuff. Charmed and Dangerous is a Texas artist. She's just, she's an artist. And she makes stitch markers. And I have several of hers. And she came out with a Highland cow. And I had to have it. I mean, can you blame me? Get that up there. I mean, look at that. Isn't that adorable? I haven't used it yet, but I will. So, it's still part of my confessions, right? <laughs> okay. Bag's almost empty. And I've been seeing the Pacific Knit Company's um, doodle cards and I saw them when I West 7th had them and I did not even notice until I was editing my video and I was like ah, I missed it and so whenever I went to McKinney Knittery she also had them and she had several different ones but the one I ended up getting is the Rhinebeck doodle cards and the reason being, it's a smaller deck, and this is all for color work. But it's like a pack of cards, and on the back, because this is her paid stuff, I'm not going to show you, but she has all these, what I'm looking at is just chart after chart, and some of the things that she has on here is apples and um, sheep, skeins of yarn, musical notes, she, uh, more sheep, uh, different types of sheep, socks, sweaters. So just fun things that I could throw in as I experiment more with color work. So not yarn, a way for me to use up part of my stash. Okay, crinkle alert. This, I got, I'll put the name down below here. Because I've gone blank on the name whenever we went down to Waxahachie. The ceramic button. And it is just beautiful. That yellow. I have no idea what I'm going to use it for. I'm going to have to do either, you know, have it on a cardigan or a shawl, turn it into a shawl button or something. I don't know, but I had to have it. I mean, isn't that beautiful? And it was only $8. I mean, that detail for $8, I could not pass it up. That was the first shop I went into, and so I got this and the B, and I made it out without any additional yarn. It didn't last long, did it? <laughs> okay. So, that's my confessions. 
I was going to be so good. I was going to be so good. I'm going to have to be really good for a while now. Oh, boy. I've got a lot of knitting and crocheting to do. And I've got some um, baby um, great nieces and nephews coming this year into next year. So you're going to be seeing a lot of baby socks and blankets and all sorts of baby stuff coming out from me. And so maybe some of this yarn will get used that direction. <laughs> Okay, so just to give you a brief little synopsis, I don't want to, I'm trying not to make this video super long, which I'm doing better than I expected to, but a little brief synopsis of what's been going on. Uh, since I was on here last, uh, let's see, we've had the yarn crawl, potiversary, root canal, Two crowns. The temporaries are coming off tomorrow and the per or today, and the permanents are going on. Uh, sinus infection. Seaver and Eggie graduating from college. You know, Eggie had to go along. Uh, if you've seen any of my videos that Seaver is in, Eggie's always in there, so you'd have to go back to see some of that. But I did a little video just of. Um, Seaver's graduation to kind of give you a little glimpse into that day. Uh, he got graduated from college and we are super proud of him. Had all of that going on and Sam has given me permission to also share a little bit of his struggles. And Sam is actually suffers from medication resistant depression. And he had his first breakdown just with me six months into our marriage. And so we've been dealing with this as a couple, and he's been dealing with this a long time. So he is doing TMS, transmagnetic. Okay, I'd have to look it up for the rest. But it's a 36 treatments each one is about 18 minutes long and it's basically putting a magnet on his head and they're trying to get his brain to just kind of work properly um, with the depression and trying to give him some relief he's about halfway through the treatments and these are you know he goes three days has a day off goes three days so it's been lots of driving and just him dealing with how he's feeling afterwards so just lots of family stuff going on um but lots of good things too the grandkids came for Seaver's graduation and just lots of family time too so and of course always lots of fun with the yarn crawl so all of that has been going on since I saw you last so that's why this video has taken so long for me to get it going so I hope you'll uh, um, enjoy this video. If you're still with me here at this, the end, don't forget to go put uh, just any comment, doesn't matter what it is, a comment into day one of the North Texas Yarn Crawl 2024 videos that I recorded. And that will um, enter you into my little goodie um, bag. Also, I can't believe I forgot to say this. I still have one person who hasn't gotten in touch with me in regards to the topping out mail drawing. So I have one prize that has not been claimed. So if you participated in the topping out mail, please go look at the video if you have not to see if you're that winner. I'm still waiting to hear from that person and I will only wait until my next episode. My next episode, I'm drawing again. Um, I don't reach out to you. You have to reach out to me. Um, I never ask for any money for um, shipping or anything, but I do ship out the cheapest way I can just because of depending on where it's going in the world. And I don't want to not have it open to everybody. So just be aware. So if you have not seen it and you participated in the topping out mail, make sure you go and take a look to see if you were the winner. Okay, so 
I think that's it. <laughs> I am going to turn the camera off. I'm going to go to bed and I'm going to enjoy my day off as much as I can getting two crowns put on. So I will see you soon. <laughs>